introduction, I will uh, so leave the, the uh, so leave the time to to Yunfei. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jia, for introducing. And uh, yeah, hi everyone. Thanks very much. Uh, also, thanks uh, Jianwei Jia and others for inviting me to uh, give the presentation here. It's my it's a very pleasure to chat with you guys and uh, discuss about the idea. Uh, and this is Yingfei. I'm from Google. paper uh, about scaling up the vision and the uh, virtual and vision language representation learning with the noise text supervision. Uh, and we also call our data and the methodology align, which stands for a larger scale image and noise text embeddings. Uh, so <clears throat> in the recent years, we have been seeing the model size continuously growing with a larger scale of training data. And the scaling of the both uh, data and the model size has been shown as a critical uh, factor for pushing the limit of the model quality in many different tasks in the vision and the language fields. For example, the recent language model party in the NLP community, like BERT, T5, Robota, even GPT, etc., which often use larger scale data sets. Um, data sets like, uh, for example, C4, which contains 150 billion tokens. Uh, and in the vision community, there is also similar effort like using the GFT data, which contains hundreds of the million to billions of images. However, when we are looking at the vision plus language models, uh, the state-of-the-art models are often training on the data which are much smaller. The commonly used largest image plus text data sets is the conceptual captions, which only contains 3 million to 12 million image text pairs. Uh, it's several magnitudes smaller than pure image or the text data sets. So in our view, the size of the image and text data set could be a limit, uh, a bound to train large scale and push the limit on the vision and language uh, community for, the more, for those tasks. Given that purpose, uh, we propose a line and focus on studying with the data set directly from the web plus some simple heuristic for cleaning can be able to help scaling up the vision um, plus language models and also could potentially benefit for pure uh, vision and language models. The idea of the align, uh, an align dataset is get the larger scale image plus all text data from the web. The raw dataset is really noise. So we think, oh, yeah, we need to do something, but we want the uh, processing to be simple enough so that actually the processing steps could be scaled up. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, next uh, that we think about. Yeah, from the image side, maybe we can remove some images which we know is upon images, or the images are those are very small. Uh, or the image, uh, for example, it's a, uh, the shorter dimension, uh, smaller than two hundred pixels, or the image with irregular shapes, which are usually maybe are banners or the ads. And all those images are associated with more than a thousand alt text. Uh, those are usually random images. Uh, similarly, we do uh, things on the text side. And, uh, eh, sorry, the, okay, it, it was stuck. And text side, we're trying to uh, apply several easy tricks to remove the noise text data as well. Uh, for example, we remove the text which are associated with uh, larger than 10 images, or we do some of the vocabulary filtering, and, and we also remove those alt text, which is either too short or too long. Um, in addition, because actually in when we processing data, we are kind of treating the text as labels of image. So we do some of the analysis, which might be interesting to uh, you as well. On overly frequent alt text data, which the all text are shared by more than 10 images uh, were discovered, as I said before. And the examples of that, of that is the resolution of the images or some certain terms like outer image or non-informative images. And we did a histogram count of for each of uh, the images with different number, or oh, sorry, the text with different number of the, of the images. And we found, oh yeah, maybe 10 is a good cut. It still keeps the uh, large number portion of the uh, data, but they remove a lot of the noise. Uh, the next is about the uh, vocabulary-based filtering. That's the purpose of that is to filter out uh, those uh, 
very rare tokens. Uh, to, to, to do that, actually, we build a very large vocabulary. Uh, we take the data set and build the, the top 100 million vocabulary contains both of the unigram and the biogram. And uh, relatively, we did uh, aggressive, here, uh, aggressive here. We only kept the alt text, which has no auto vocabulary. Uh, it, it's about close to 80% of the data uh, uh, satisfy this condition. So uh, it's still a big amount. So, and uh, it's, uh, there are some examples uh, for the examples in the different in vocabulary rate. Uh, we can see actually if we most of them the tokens are out of vocabulary the all texts are purely garbage and if it contains some of the uh, out of vocabulary tokens it looks okay but uh, uh, because we are treating as uh, this as a labels of images we think yeah probably we should be more aggressive and uh, uh, make it as clean as possible in the constraint that it can be scaled up so we decide to say oh yeah let's remove all the the alt text which has any unknown token in the vocabulary. Uh, the next is we also trying to remove the alt text either too long or too short. Uh, if it's shorter than three tokens, usually some uh, non-informative words. And if it's larger than 20, a, sometimes are okay. Sometimes it's uh, re relatively random. So we, we, the 20 is a relatively random cut. Here we discard about 25% of the data and it keeps uh, about 70% 70, uh, 70 of the data in total. Uh, the, after all of these filtering steps, we got about 1.8 billion noise image text pairs. It's still noise. So there are some examples uh, which you can see. The second image in the first row is still a summary of a version as 2157, 29, June 2010. Uh, it's a still noise, but uh, we think, oh, yeah, for, for most of them, it might be okay. And for the others, it's still relatively noise. Uh, there are some JPEG um, as a, a suffix of certain, uh, a few of them. We decided to uh, live with that. And of course, there are still room to improve this data set and the models uh, by keep cleaning the data set. Uh, we decide, yeah, uh, leave this as a future work. Yeah, that's about data, but and then uh, about the modeling. Uh, the data is still noise, and but it can provide a cross modality supervision. So, which model to use um, to train such an image text joint model? The contrastive learning actually came into our mind. Uh, the contrastive learning approach has been very popular in the last couple of years uh, for either pure image tasks or pure text tasks, and it, uh, they both are very successful in the different communities. In our experience, it is a very data efficient approach and it can be scaled up very easily. And the benefit comes from that the image and the text are modeled separately in image and the text contrastive learning framework. And the negative sampling is very efficient as well. Another intuition is using the contrastive learning for image text is that we can treat the task as a caption or text prediction task based on the image input, which has been shown uh, as an effective approach to learn the uh, vision models. The reverse side, we can also learn the text representations with treating the image as a label. Um, but we also notice the alt text is not really a natural language. Uh, so the, the language model or the style is very different than people normally uh, communicate or write up in an article or in a conversation. So uh, in this work, we mainly focus on the image plus text model tasks and the image virtual tasks, as I listed in the application side. And uh, to this point, um, some of you uh, may ask, well, so what's the difference between Align and the Clip? So the Clip is an uh, image text contrastive work from OpenAI. Uh, I carefully read their paper, and I have to say, yeah, from the modeling wise, they are really the same. Uh, the approach is really close. Uh, even with some tricks we used to, for example, the tuning the softmax temperature uh, and optimizers, uh, the, the, I, I, I cannot say uh, the, the two models are different. They are essentially the, the same, the same thing with tiny differences in uh, during the training. Uh, the main difference comes from the data. Clip uses data with more cleaning and manual filtering process. Um, and uh, while our aligned data 
we only apply a very minimum processing and filtering. The simplicity of our data approach makes it easy to scaling up to billion or even tens of billion of data, and also it is easy to be extended to a different languages. And we will discuss the multilingual case later. Um, and uh, as many of you are uh, already familiar with, a uh, contrastive learning approach actually uh, basically is a two-tower approach, and it encodes text and image separately, giving a training batch, and then apply a matrix multiplication on text and image encodings. The diagonal elements are treated as positive, and the other elements are treated as negatives. A softmax is applied at each row to predict which one is a positive. Uh, from the mixed negatives. Despite the simple model architecture, there are still a lot of things uh, need to be tuned to make the model work. Uh, in our final model, the text tower uses a bird transformer and the image tower uses efficient net. We also try to use the negatives beyond a single batch. Uh, I have to note, uh, our model is trained on TPU. Um, I don't remember, actually it's a 16 by 16, it's about uh, 256 chips. If the chip will have a single training batch, uh, if uh, assume a single training batch with a batch size S, um, there is one positive for each example and seven negatives from the single batch. But we can treat all the examples from the other chips as a random negatives, and they, we can combine them together. This has been shown a very effective approach for this task. And, uh, and the additional negatives um, may be useful for other contrastive learning tasks as well, but it depends on which task you are working on. So it's not generally useful, but for the image text, we found it's quite important. And there are other techniques, include selecting the right optimizer, tuning softmax temperature, and the embedding dimensions already also contributes to the final model of the align. And we can show some of the evaluations of the two-tower model during the, our development. And this evaluation is based on the Flickr static care image retrieval record at one and the text retrieval record at one. And I will describe more details of this task and the, the metrics actually in the next few slides. Uh, but this, uh, this slide basically shows uh, applying the uh, different uh, or the, during the development when applying different uh, tricks or different modeling ideas, how the model gets improved. And uh, from the beginning to the end, it's a huge jump. Even uh, using a simple two-tower model, you, by tuning those factors, you can see a lot of the improvement. Uh, so we start from the early model using a ResNet and a bag of words uh, as a te as text slide. Adding more negative skills uh, gave a decent performance boost. And we got the largest again by increasing the model capacity uh, by using the board transformer at the text side and the efficient net at the image side. At last, using the lamp optimizer and switching to the English data gives us the last mileage of this journey. Uh, after we achieve the best performance, we perform ablation study on some key techniques, which we will show them later. Uh, so metrics. Uh, as the training objective of the image text training, uh, the image text ranking, we evaluate the model on several image text retrieval and alignment tasks first, both of the zero shot and fine tuned with in domain training data. For image text retrieval, following other work in this domain, we construct the retrieval EVAS from MS Coco and Flickr 30K. The metrics we use uh, required k, where k equals one in the five or 10 in the paper, and k actually in the one in the letter size here, uh, so uh, for the simplicity. We also evaluate the model on the crisscross captions, also known as the 6CXC, which is an extension of the MS Coco with fine grained human annotations on the caption to caption and the image to caption and the image to image pairs. CXC can be evaluated as a retrieval task similar to MS Coco and also be evaluated using correlation coefficient matrix like Spearman and, uh, and comparing against the fine grained human annotations. And here, actually, uh, we list the pre training configurations and fine tuning configurations here. More details can be found in the paper. Uh, not we evaluate in both of the zero shot and the fine tuned models. For zero shot EVAS, we use the pre training only. Um, um, I want to I want a bit. Any question so far? 
Oh, uh, so I have a question about the pre-training part. So you yeah. use the bird base for the text, uh, uh, for the text input and the efficient net for the image input. Will you fine tune these two net during the pre-training, or you fix it? Uh, actually, we we only use the BERT uh, architecture. architecture and efficient architecture. Both of the models are initial, uh, randomly initialized at the pre-training ah. stage. And the pre-training, we mean the align model, and the fine tuning, we, we mean the, uh, the MEMS COCO or the Flickr SOTK. I see, I see, I see. So did you try to like use the initial, uh, for example, the pre-trained BERT logic and efficient net, on efficient net, did you try that? Uh, we tried, but there are two caveats. And the first of all, if efficient net is different, the first of all, the, the, the BERT. The BERT, mm -hmm. actually, if we use the uh, pre-trained checkpoint, then we have to use the BERT uh, vocabulary as well, mm -hmm. uh, which we found is uh, less effective. And if we build a, a customized vocab, the, the performance can be improved in, in the pre preliminary experiments. So after the preliminary experiments, we always use the new vocab and the training from the scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is that we also observe uh, when comparing the model initialized from a pre-trained checkpoint or random initialized, it depends on the training data you have. If we have the enough training data, then the both models will converge to the same point in the end. So in our case, we have uh, 1.8 billion image test data. So uh, we didn't really find uh, uh, initialized from a pre-trained checkpoint to be helpful for the final performance. But if you do not have enough data, or you want the model converge faster, uh, yes, I think a initialized from a check, uh, pre-trained checkpoint will be helpful for those cases. I see, I see. So uh, another question about the data part. Did you try to pre-trained on your own data set, or, or do you compare it with like pre-training on the, for example, Google concept uh, captioning data set? Uh, we have a comparison, actually, the aligned data versus the conceptual captions data in the later slides. And okay. uh, the, the, the gain is very significant, especially when we have a larger model. Uh, the, the, the difference actually is much larger as well. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, one simple summary on that thread. So if you have a smaller size model, then use uh, conceptual captions versus align. The difference is not that big. But when you're scaling the model up, a uh, large, uh, large data set actually is really helps. Uh, hi, uh, I have a question yeah. just about uh, the model. Uh, uh, are you going to release the model with? As, as you may know, uh, uh, there are lots of other downstream tasks uh, which could leverage a uh, clip pre-trained model to achieve very good, very decent uh, results. So um, are you also going to release it? Sorry. Uh, we, we hope so, but so far, actually, we are still going through some uh, legal process, and it's not very easy for us to release uh, this particular model. Uh, we are working on some other ways, for example, using um, relatively public accessible data set uh, to train the model, uh, but it's still working in progress. So I cannot promise anything in, at this moment. We are able to release an, uh, a pre-trained checkpoint. So hopefully, we can go through that. Um, but you know, and in a company, it takes time, and sometimes uh, legal will be a blocker <laughs> for doing anything like that. I see. So the uh, line data is released, right? Oh, oh, go ahead. No, uh, actually not. So because we do not own the copyright of data neither, so we do not. Uh, I think there is also uh, a potential issue actually for releasing the data as well. Um, we, we know the data can be used for the research purpose, but uh, for redistribute that, I think uh, it's probably hard. Um, but uh, instead, I think there is uh, an, another threat actually to getting such data is for maybe from the common crawl. Um, that's probably an easy way to get uh, such data uh, to train the model. Okay. Yeah, I have one uh, more question. Yes, um, the batch size is that um, I know you need to be large enough batch size. Is is this uh, you guys done some experiments around this uh, number, or you just uh, randomly pick a large enough number? Uh, we use as a largest batch size that we can afford, uh, and we do the ablation study in the later slides. So you can see the batch size indeed actually shows a difference in terms of performance. Um, we do the large batch size because it's 
efficient to do that uh, crossing the TPU training. It's very easy to sync uh, the TPU course. So if your single TPU course batch size eight and you have eight cores, and if you aggregate them together, it will be eight by eight and it becomes uh, batch size 64. And if you keep expanding that and with a single batch size 16 uh, in uh, each chip and uh, you have eight by eight TPU cores and 64 TPU cores, and it becomes 16 uh, um, multiply 64 batch size e effectively. So I see. Thanks. Uh, so in fact, I have a related question. It's about uh, the data scale. So we know data scale is important. So uh, maybe 100 million is good, 200 million and 400 million. Uh, so my, my question is, uh, do we really need to go to, for example, in your data set is 1.8 billion. Mm -hmm. So are your observation is larger, the better, or somehow they will reach an upper bound? And uh, so, so I mean, uh, how do you feel the data size, the data scale? We just get the as large as possible for us. We we also did some of the ablation study on the data size. If you reduce the uh, the the data size by, for example, uh, ten, uh, we indeed uh, observe the uh, uh, the significant performance drop. Uh, but actually, it still gets a very decent performance. Um, I don't remember actually exact numbers. We probably can discuss this in the later slides when we have the numbers there. Yeah, okay, thank you. I, uh, I have a question about the fine tuning. So mm -hmm. you said you fine tuning on uh, MS Coco. So the MS Coco, each image has five captions. Yes. So you treat, so that means one image has uh, multiple text. Is that right? So you yeah, treat, that's, that's right. So, but you, you still use the image text pair, the loss. So, so the uh, yeah. image correspond to multiple, multiple texts. So will that uh, uh, cause some problem? Or? Uh, we simply duplicate these examples. Uh, so for each uh, image text uh, pair, actually we have only one uh, image with uh, one text. Uh, but for the MSCOCO in this case, there are five captions. So it will produce five training examples. So potentially it will create a false negatives uh, because if you have two, uh, uh, captions for the same image appear in a single training batch. It produces the uh, the the, po the, the positives will becomes a negative of the another example. Yeah. Uh, but the, the chance is low, and we did, we observe it should be it's it's okay in this training. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have the follow up question about the caption. So um. So what's your average size length of the caption? Uh, just why not, if you have an image have multiple captions, why not just union all the caption together? So. Uh, if union caption together, you mean the MS Coco or the align data? Align, align when you are training. Uh, so. uh, we did analysis. Most of the align data has only one uh, image, one caption per image. Uh, and uh, there are some of them, um, the small portion of them has multiple. Uh, not, we, 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 again, we still only duplicate them because actually uh, we still think that each caption or each alt text is an uh, independent sentence. Mixing them together, it will, it might be work, but we didn't try that because actually it's not the natural language anymore, right? Well, yeah, well, you could say yes or no, right? <laughs> that's that's um, um, it, you just have one image, you have multiple interpretations from different perspective. So that's uh, um, it could be union, could I, I, I don't know. This is just a just a curiosity. So um, and what's your average caption size about the align data? Uh, I think this actually we have a histogram. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I missed it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So most of them actually on the three to nine, so it's relatively short. Okay. Uh, actually, given that a union of them, my, my works. So uh, actually a lot of the captions actually are the union of the different or short phrases. So it might be work. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Uh, so next, actually, let's look at the results. Uh, 
uh, it's a fun part. Um, first, the image text retrieval uh, results. This slide shows the uh, retrieval results. The record one on Flickr 30K and MS Coco data sets, both of the data short and fine tuned. Uh, yeah, no surprisingly, Align significantly outperforms the existing methods, including the cross modality attention models uh, that are usually too expensive for larger scale retrieval applications. And compared to the clip, which used a very similar approach, Align model is significantly better on the image to text retrieval, uh, but much better, uh, sorry, slightly better than the image to text retrieval, but much better on the text to image retrieval. Uh, it's probably due to, uh, due to the data issue. So uh, we, we don't know uh, the exact the data of Align, uh, sorry, a clip was using. So we suspect uh, the data creates the differences. And uh, in the next slide, uh, we evaluate on the CXC. Actually, CXC, as I said, is a, an extension of MS Coco. Uh, the, the, so the retrieval EVA is similar to MS Coco retrieval EVA, uh, but with more human annotations. So the results are also similar. Align is better than the baseline models uh, in a large margin across the board, uh, with more than 20% uh, required one improvement on the image to text and the text to image retrieval. Uh, one big reason of that is the baseline models from the CXC paper is relatively uh, uh, weaker comparing to the uh, baseline models in the previous page, but it still shows the Align model is much better than um, the previous models. And, and interestingly, the correlation, however, shows more disparate results. Align uh, outperforms baseline models on the uh, SITS, uh, which is an uh, image to text task by a large margin, uh, but not the best on the STS, the semantic se uh, text similarity, and the SIS, the semantic image similarity tasks. We think this could be for several, several reasons. First, the training objective of Align is focusing on the image text alignment, but not on the text to text or the image to image alignment. Uh, so it optimizes um, overlay on the image text tasks. And the secondly, it evaluates on both of the positive and the negative labels of the MS the CXC eval. And the retrieval evals mostly care about the positive examples. And the contrastive learning is probably pays more attention on the positive examples as well. So given the, those uh, thoughts, actually we think, oh yeah, might, might be uh, reasonable. And, of, and also, CXC original paper shows a multitask model could achieve better performance by optimizing both of the image text plus the text-to-text -text models. And we think that could be a good direction to improve the image and the text representation for uh, the general semantic similarity purpose. Uh, but we leave this as a future work. And so here, I have, um, can I have yes. one more question about yeah, so you mentioned about line data is is noisy. The the text mm -hmm. and image it's is noisy. Is there any way you guys have done some measurement about how much of the noise could uh, affect the performance of the model? We did uh, some experiments. For example, we did uh, some cleaning using some internal tool, and we also tried to clean the data using our best align model. Mm -hmm. We do observe. Um, in both approaches, we can remove a lot of the noise data, maybe 10% of the data or 20% of data can be removed. Uh, and it's, uh, by eyeballing, we observe the removed data are indeed a very noise. However, when we train the align model on the cleaned version, which I think, uh, we at least we think it's a cleaned version, there's no mm -hmm. difference in terms of the performance. So it's a good or bad. So at least to say, oh, we do not need that many 1.8 billion to achieve the same performance. But the, 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 the other side is, we are not sure it's because of the size or the noise. So, so. so is the, when you compare these both, they have the same size, same data size. Uh, after Once cleaning, you clean the ver after cleaning, the data size is still the same as your noisy one, or it's, it's slightly smaller? It's slightly smaller. I see. Yeah, we, we, we think 10% or 20% is not significant enough. So we, we think uh, it's probably the model is able to figure out the data noise. 
uh, and uh, we have a theory that uh, the, when we increase the model, actually, we are talking. We, we usually treat uh, there are two dimensions. One is the data efficiency, where the model, uh, sorry, the data, the cleaner, the better. And the other direction is the model efficiency. So if the model is able to handle the noise data, so we think if we increase the model size, it's probably the model are able to figure out oh, this data is noise, but it can still learn from that. Uh, but mm. at which degree it, we we don't have a very good uh, measurement yet. I see. Thanks for sharing mm. the insights. Yeah. Uh, and uh, next, we look at uh, yeah something really fun. Given an uh, input text, we apply the model to retrieve the closest image in the embedding space from a very large candidate pool, which contains 160 million images. Uh, in the first row, we show the closest images for the candidate pool for query uh, Van Gogh star night with uh, some suffix, the details in black and white on a canvas or in dark wood frame. Uh, interestingly, the model is able to recognize the subtle differences of them and retrieve reasonable images. And uh, similarly, the closest image for query Lambert Street, view from bottom, view from top, bird's eye view, and uh, in heavy rain. And, and also in the last example in the bottom. The model actually is quite good on recognizing the differences. Um, and uh, <clears throat> also, actually, the next uh, Example the image plus text to image, and there was a famous example of king minus man plus woman equals queen when the water embedding was developed. It allows us to use the vector arithmetics to work with the analogies. Uh, and we observe the similar things here uh, in the joint image to text embedding space, which learned from the align model. For example, when we use a panda image plus a word red, we can retrieve a red panda image. Uh, and uh, when we uh, plus uh, Australia, we, we, we saw a color, uh, which is also similar. And uh, the similar thing for the penguin. And the last two rows also shows the example of the manip manipulating the colors and other attributes of an objective images. Question. Mm -hmm. So so these are images are, are part of your training data, right? It's not you being interpreted. Uh, these images are not in the training data, actually. Oh, okay. So, so the model give has some kind of interpretation capability. Yes, that's that's mm -hmm. worth showing. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Sure. And uh, in subtraction, uh, subtractions works too. So, first of all, shows the image of removing cars, removing trees and houses from uh, the original source image, and also actually uh, the, there are many examples. Um, removing, for example, the third row, removing bridges, waterfalls, and uh, th those are all possible from the, these examples. Uh, we believe this will enable a lot of the new applications or uh, new directions. Uh, we are really looking forward to see how people will use a model like that to have a creative uh, applications. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, did you mean the retrieval of the images is not from the training data? Uh, they or are the not from training data, yeah. It's a holdout. But possibly out? there will be a near duplicate. Uh, we didn't try to uh, detect all the near duplicate images. I see. So how large is the like uh, retrieval the image set? For example, the pool. The pool is 160 million. 160 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are mm -hmm. separated from the training set. Is, is it from the validation set? No. Oh, no, either. Okay. Mm -hmm. So compared with the training data, like uh, which so. To, what, how many images in the training data, by the way? Uh, it's also one point million, one point something million, because what? for each image, they are really have duplicate our text. They are often different. So, so why you want to keep a hold out like image set? For uh, this Im not all images has all text. So, I see. Mm. Okay, thank you. And uh, we further apply the model to the virtual classification and uh, task. The classification layer was trained uh, with, with a set of training data. Um, and uh, for example, actually, we take the image encoder out and just apply the linear classification um, layer on top of that uh, with kind of using the basically using the aligned trend image representation model. 
And we also try to the, 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 the zero shot. The zero shot actually is, is still a retrieval best. So giving an uh, image, um, giving an uh, image, uh, we encode that and using the nearest neighbor to retrieve the nearest uh, uh, text actually from the embedding space. Uh, sorry about that, There's some noise from my kids. And uh, this is uh, the results. Um, and uh, for, for the zero shot, for the zero shot, actually we apply the same text prompt and sampling as in the clip, averaging the embeddings of templates like a photo of uh, the class name, uh, and it improves the uh, performance. Sorry, one second. Sorry guys, it's my daughter's birthday, so that's some <laughs> party is actually in, in the house. And, oh, happy uh, birthday to your daughter. <laughs> but I do have a question, uh, maybe I should ask even much earlier. So you oh, guys yeah. put, select the efficient net as the embedding, image embedding. But meanwhile, I think Clipper used the ResNet or used other. Is there any reason behind it or you done guys done any experiments? Uh, sorry, I, I don't, don't understand. Uh, Clip said use, use, use what? Use ResNet, right? Uh, as oh, efficient net versus yeah, ResNet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we, we, in our experiments, we found the efficient net actually works better in our uh, experiments. But it's, we compare the efficient net, for example, B7 versus the ResNet 152. Uh, efficient net is better. Uh, but when actually we did additional experiments and uh, increase the efficient net, um, with a larger parameter size, the performance are getting close. So it's mainly about the model capacity and the model size. I see. And Thanks. we also did additional experiments with the transformer. Uh, we also get the very similar performance uh, in terms of the accuracy and the retrieval performance, but the transformer is trans faster as well. So um, for us, we mainly explore the task and use those encoders as the backbones. Uh, and there are also a lot of uh, work actually exploring which is the best. For example, combining the CNN plus the transformer, we leave this direction to them and leveraging the, those work uh, as the backbone. Mm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, compared to the uh, clip, actually we observe uh, some slightly different uh, performance on the ImageNet R and the ImageNet A. We believe that's because of the, uh, especially for ImageNet R, because of the data set distribution, uh, there is really a lot of the cartoon or art images from the web, uh, and uh, which I believe it contribute a lot to the performance on the diversity of the align model and also uh, especially understanding on the art style uh, pictures. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the virtual classification um, performance comparing to the previous state art models. And uh, uh, I'm not an expert in the computer vision, so I'm not going to explain too much here. Uh, but this, uh, but roughly, this gives us a good sense that the model learned from the contrastive learning with larger scale noise data is able to produce a very, very good uh, image representation, which is aligned with our intuition that we're treating the caption text or our text as a label of the image and use this as a supervision to learn that uh, image representation. There are one intuition there is we need some way to connect from the image representation to a human recognizable levels. Uh, and we believe uh, the from image to our text is a bridge for doing that. Um, but there is also some caveats or some way, something we may miss from this data set. So we believe combining the self-supervised learning from the image side and the alarm training uh, for, uh, for with the image plus text probably can, can reach uh, even better performance for the image representation. Basically, we are letting the image self supervised learning to learn better features for the image and let the image the text data to provide the bridge from the image feature to the human recognizable label. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for next, and we also evaluate the model on the VTAP, which uh, um, covers more domains of the data. And uh, 
uh, align is much better is much better comparing to the previous uh, beat uh, error model. I think one partial reason is the align data is very diverse and covers a lot of the different topics. And this is a prediction study I I I, uh, I mentioned before. The first this is uh, model capacity. Um, the image encoder quality relies more on image encoder capacity and uh, the image text retrieval uh, relies on the capacity from the both side, which is not a surprise. Uh, and uh, yeah, actually in the slide, we said that the vision transformer backbone is an ongoing work. Actually, we already uh, did that. And uh, uh, the vision uh, VIT model actually uh, perform, out outperforms efficient and um, Efficient at L2 uh, by a slight, slight, a slight margin. Uh, and the more robust uh, optimized uh, choices, the uh, Adam, uh, other factor, uh, they works, but so far uh, we still find that the best performance is achieved by the, uh, the, by the lamp. But other factor is hard for, for scaling the model even larger because it's used less library. Uh, uh, hi, Yifei. Uh, yes. I have a question about the uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you do the pre-training, is it based on float 16 or float 32? Uh, let me recall. We have this uh, uh, flag. The, the, we probably did on the six, 32. 32, I see. The reason I asked this one is uh, empirically, I find out uh, uh, when the data that is quite noise, um, uh, float float 16 sometimes could, uh, it is very easy to get uh, an N or uh, some infinity um, numbers, but uh, floating uh, float 32 uh, works uh, works better, but it is much slower. Yeah, that, that, uh, I, I think in our case, we mostly experiment on the float 32, uh, but when scaling the model up, we indeed actually needed to enable the float 16, so the, it uses less memory, right? We, so far, we, yeah, yeah. I don't remember we have so a lot of the, uh, the, the NANs. Mm, that's a good question, but I don't have a very good answer on, on that yet, so how, how to enable the stable floating 16, uh, float 16 training. I see, but this, but, but this study is based on float uh, 32. Yes. I see. Yeah, and uh, another question about the temperature. Um, are you going to talk about the temperature uh, ablation study? Uh, seems like we don't uh, have that in the slide. Uh, we have the temperature uh, the, study in the paper. Yeah, the the, the question is, uh, yeah, in the paper, uh, the temperature is learnable. Uh, empirically, I find out uh, uh, the task is uh, is different. It is not like this clip, but it is uh, similar, contrastive uh, loss. And uh, I also tried the, the learnable uh, temperature, and the observation is at the very beginning the temperature uh, is is one, uh, similar, uh, same as the paper, uh, mm -hmm. and then it tries to uh, decrease uh, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from one to for for example. Uh, 0 0.001 or uh, and it always decreases it looks like uh, um there is no um uh, no hint or no uh, potential it will increase or try to uh, uh change a little bit but it is always decreasing uh and eventually sometimes it will give an uh, because when uh, the temperature is too too low um probably the loss will be uh, not stable so have you ever also observed a similar uh, problem? No, we usually see the temperature will be it will converge uh, after the training. Usually after seven hundred or thousand steps, it will converge, and it usually converge at uh, fifty something or forty. Uh, sorry, uh, we we use a reversed way, so one over uh, sixty or sixty or one over fifty, the zero point zero two or zero point one zero point one something. Uh, I see. So it and will the, convert, uh, yeah, and, and if you observe uh, unstable training with the, the uh, learnable temperature, I think you can manually fix that. Um, actually, we found that the fixed yeah. version or manually tuned version works slightly better, but the tuned version is self -tuned, tunable version is just easy to uh, let the model to figure out and uh, uh, reduce the tuning requirement. I see. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, and, uh, the, the, uh, the, and this slide shows the ablation study on the data set size. Um, of course, the larger models can, over, uh, I think actually there is a conclusion that the large models can overfit on small data set, uh, especially when we train from the 63 million and um, increase from B3, uh, efficient net B3 plus the port mini uh, to the B7 plus port base does not get the better performance uh, on the MS Coco and the ImageNet. But when the data set is sufficiently large, large model scale help is better. And uh, uh, we also compare the align using 12 million data or your 6 million data or 3 million data. Uh, it's four times noise data compared to the 63 million. Um, it's a, the four times actually the noise data outperforms the clean data, which is 3 million conceptual captions. So that's a rough number. Uh, I don't believe this provides guidance that the four times data can give you a better performance when you go from the clean data to noise, but uh, it definitely there are some trade off uh, between the data noise and the data, uh, data size. Uh, and uh, we have 10 minutes, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the multilingual case. Um, multilingual case, actually, here actually we show a slide that uh, the image and the text are going to the same embedding space, a similar spot of the same embedding space. And the, what we want to do with the multilingual case is we put more the text in the multilingual way actually into the same spot. For example, the Chinese word, the Lamborghini Urus 2020, and uh, the English word will be close to each other. Uh, and it's also, also close to the Lamborghini image as well. And uh, similarly to the cat and the cat images. Uh, in the multilingual, there is also a lot of the evaluation data set, like a free cursor TK, MS uh, which can be extended to the multi K and MS Coco to the stair, which is a Japanese uh, extension, and also the XTT, uh, the, the test set for CL7, uh, well resourced languages, the WIT, Wikipedia uh, best images, uh, image text data set, which combines the scale of the Wikipedia with the human annotations, and it covers. Uh, 100 more, uh, plus languages. And this is a rough statistics on the number and the languages covered for each of the data set. Um, and uh, the, the simplest way actually to lift the multilingual model is that we get the language constraint, lift the language constraint and uh, just process uh, data in all languages we have. And uh, we process that and match the size of the total data to the English training data. And we use the same architecture and the training parameters as English model, uh, except actually we build a customized vocab, uh, which <coughs> increase the size from 100,000 to 250,000 to make sure the coverage in the broad coverage of the languages. And this table actually evaluates on the multi k data set, uh, the mean recall average record one, five, 10 on the image to text and the text to image retrieval. And uh, we can see the Alan model, uh, especially the Alan multilingual model, uh, gives a pretty good zero shot performance um, here. Oh, actually, I realized actually this slide here missed uh, the, the uh, uh, fine tuned performance. So basically, the zero shot we can see is Alan, both of it, uh, multilingual is largely outperforms uh, the uh, M3P models. Um, and with fine tuning, the Alan model actually achieves a very similar performance comparing to the UC2. And uh, uh, note the UC2 is and the MS3P are cross attention models, and Alan are two tower models. So, from the model capacity or the uh, perspective, the cross attention models may have the better uh, <clears throat> uh, power to encode for the image and the text interaction. But we show with larger scale data, the simple Alan model training um, can achieve the similar performance. Uh, and we, but we still observe the uh, uh, issues actually training with, it, with this data. If we look at the dist distribution of the multilingual align, we found uh, more than half of the data is from English and the uh, top 10 languages maybe actually covers more than 90% of the uh, total data. So how about the low resource languages? How much we really learn from those? Um, and uh, this comes into my, our mind, uh, a lazy work, which is a language agnostic word sentence embedding. Uh, it learns the multilingual from text. So it's a si similar contrastive learning idea, but uh, the contrastive side are the, the text and its translation in the other language. The effect of that is it encodes the, the text in different languages in the same spot. 
So how about we combining the best of the two worlds? And this leads to uh, uh, the model we call the Muro, the multi-model multitask retrieval across languages. Uh, it uh, basically a multitask contrastive learning framework uh, other the balance the text to text paired data uh, and uh, for the align and the legacy we share the text encoder between the two tasks and uh, the, there is a task specific projection layer on the text encoder in terms of the data it uses a 1.8 billion and align multilingual data and also use a 6 billion translation pairs um, then let's see the performance now actually we can see the in on the zero shot uh, this is a relatively smaller size the model, so it's not really comparable to the Align uh, L2. And but in the uh, in the M3P, compared to M3P, it's a big jump in the zero shot. And uh, this is a fine tune that we compare to the UC2. And uh, this time we show the better performance. Previously, the Align can only achieve a comparable performance on the uh, uh, with UC2, but now with Mural training, we achieve the uh, better performance. And uh, this is the, some <clears throat> evaluation on the nine on the resource languages from the width, the Wikipedia image text data set. And we comparing to the align with uh, and the multilingual align or the uh, align plus lepsy, the mu raw actually is achieved much better performance against about 19 points on the mean recall for those languages. This is a fine-tuned. Uh, fine-tuned actually can largely improve on both sides. Um, the uh, mu raw model is still uh, four points better than the align model. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. A uh, summary of that is a large scale image text data from web uh, with minimal frequency based filtering can produce us a very large scale noise data set. And we can scaling up the model size with a simple dual encoder plus a contrastive learning with such data set and the state of the art results on the visual task classification and the image text retrieval can be achieved. For the future, um, I think actually the re responsible AI is one of the big thing um, to, to work with the harmful data and unfair bias in the multi-model models and the data. And uh, secondly, how can we keep improving the model quality for the low resource languages? Uh, and at, at last, actually there is a limitation on the model scaling with contrastive learning that if we, when we increase the model size, uh, in the same hardware, the number of the, the batch size we can afford will be decreased. That means uh, reduce the negative sample size. So how can we train with this uh, reduced sample size for the ne uh, negatives? Uh, that's one of the challenge actually we need to address when we further increase the model. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have today. Thank you very much for everyone. So I guess we probably still have uh, time for the question and discussion. Yeah, thanks, Yinfei. Uh, so any uh, more questions from the audience? Hey, Yinfei, this is Yichun Yuan from MSR. Um, this is the brilliant work. So uh, I want to ask for your second piece of work, uh, the multilingual version of line. Is a paper online? Or uh, is it's, it... it's not yet. It's a pub approved, but we haven't uh, released that yet. Oh, I see. So, uh, and one question uh, on this work is, um, when you use uh, multilingual data, compare it with English only, um, does it improve your visual representation? Does it improve your visual encoder? If, uh, if, if let's, sorry. That's a good question. Actually, we haven't evaluated the, uh, the virtual classification tasks on top of that. But we did some evaluation on the CXC. Uh, it contains the image to image retrieve uh, scenario task. It actually performs better. Oh, I see. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. So I actually have a related question is, uh, so since uh, uh, in the line model, the world launch uh, is trained from scratch. So did you happen to evaluate uh, the, po uh, the performance of uh, the world launch on standard NLU task? Uh, we evaluated on uh, so for example uh, the, the performance. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. so how did you feel about it? Uh, it it's a reasonable but not uh, as good as the state of the art sentence embedding models. 
the reason of that is we, we think the alt text is still, uh, it's not a natural language. It's not actually how people will write up as a sentence, like uh, for example, a comments or, uh, uh, in, uh, or in, uh, any ch in any of the chat. So it learns the token meaning, especially a virtual information of a particular token entity, for example, but uh, it's probably not uh, uh, contains enough information for, for example, emotion or things like that. Um, which you call, uh, often delivered in the text. So it's it, it's reasonable, but it's not as good as we expected at, at least at the beginning. Yeah, thank you, Yunfei. Uh, I have another question. It's about the training. Uh, so the performance is very great. Uh, so how, uh, so when you do the training, uh, so since you have TPU, how long it take? Uh, for for one turn around. So for example, how long you will see the results so that you can tune your model? Uh, just that I want to have a sense, yeah. Usually two to three days, we can tell the model is doing uh, good or completely off. Uh, for some models, actually we let the model to train maybe one or two weeks and uh, to let it finish to see the final performance. But for most of the models and one, or one to two days, can, we can tell, yeah, this is not good enough. We can We can stop that. Okay, thank you. And for tuning the models, we're usually working on the, uh, for example, port base plus efficient B5. And this uh, this makes actually us to iterate faster. The model size is still large, but not too large to, uh, uh, to slow down the iteration. I have an open question. What's the most difficult part of the project? The most difficult part of the project is, I think, uh, the pushing for the state of the art actually is quite uh, challenging for us. At actually, uh, we we uh, we achieve a reasonable performance actually in a very early stage. But how how to push actually the limit? Uh, the, the there are a lot of the small tricks actually uh, in the uh, uh, in in the contrastive learning training. So finding the 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 best setup. Uh, and pushing for the best performance on the classification performance and also uh, the, the image test retrieval actually cost us a lot of time. Thanks for sharing. I guess we are about the time as well. So. Yeah, so 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 I think we are right on time. And uh, so let's uh, thank our speaker, Yinfei, again, and also happy birthday to your daughter. Yeah, thank you uh, for the uh, so for the great talk. Yeah, thanks very much. Well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Yinfei. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you.